In this video, we're gonna show you the next steps on doing your Tahoe overlanding solid axle swap in your GMT 400 or OBS Chevy. If you're just now joining us, this is a step-by-step -step video series showing you how to install your Tahoe overlanding solid axle conversion kit on your full-size GM. Stay tuned. So just a little bit of clean red grease on the threads for our upper locating arms. So there's one left hand thread, one right hand thread um, hind. I like to thread them all the way in and then back them back out so they're starting at a good common starting point. So I'll go both joints all the way in and then I'll show you what I do next. So you'll have to take a heim joint and just twist it like that. It keeps these misalignment spacers from falling out. Okay, so it's probably good idea to kind of chase holes just to make sure you get paint out of them. Okay, so left and right hand thread, and that's what's important, make it adjustable. But I've got them fully collapsed. So what I like to do is put one end in okay This is really easy to just put in, and then you can just spit it out. Rather than trying to get everything to line up, just put it in so you can spin it out. See? And even just by hand, you can spin this out. Get it where you want it. So it's easier to... And so if you're ever trying to put in these, these upper locating arms or anything, they're adjustable. So put them in wherever they want to go in rather than trying to pull stuff and stretch stuff. And then just adjust them, adjust them down so that they'll fit in wherever they want to go. And then you can adjust them back out or in as needed. So that makes this a lot easier. I've seen guys that fight these trying to, you know, set it at a certain length and then try to pry on the axle and things depending on if they've got springs in, if they've ever got to change this. If you ever try to put links in like these upper locating arms that are double adjustable, if the... The two bolt holes when you go to install them are kind of weird. They're not the same length you want them to be. Just adjust it till they hit and then use it, you know, crank on it to pull them where they need to be afterwards. It's a lot easier that way. Okay, so you'll see the radius arms are installed, but all the bolts are loose. There's, the nuts are just barely on them. They're not tight. This just makes things go together a little bit easier if you leave everything loose until most, if not all, the parts are installed. So what we're going to do next, coil springs. Okay, so the coil springs, as you can see, has an end, and it's, so this bigger end, I always like to put towards the front of the vehicle. That. Limit straps, because as you can see, the axle will just fall out if you don't have something to hold it. The limit straps keep the springs from popping out, and also if you were to try to use your shock as your limit strap, it ruptures shocks to let them be what bottoms out. So, So 
So the limit strap shares a nut with the uh, upper locating arm, as you can see. And here we have our Tahoe Overlanding Ultra Heavy Duty Track Bar. And so we, you may recall earlier, we um, you know, tack welded these ends on, took them out, knocked the bushings out, full welded those ends, and then after we did that, we had to set it all off to be sandblasted, but let's get her put in. So, if you can use a factory bolt and this little uh, tab nut, it actually works pretty well because you can slide this tab nut up in there and then use the factory bolt. If you don't, that's fine. You can use a nut. You can actually get a wrench up in there to hold the nut if you need to. Or you can take a nut and weld a little piece of metal to it, whatever. I happen to have this. I'm going to use this. As you can see, I did chromoly weld washers on the bolt holes for this bracket, so I'm not going to use any kind of flat washers. Those, those are only washer I need. Oh, bitch. I forgot. I forgot. It's easier to do it this way. Sometimes something as simple as a ratchet strap can help pull things in the line. And on the track bar, that's a... You can see it pulling it. Now the bolt holes line up. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, um, you want to put the bolt front to back because you'll see usually your bump stop pads behind here. So if you weld on your bump stop pad and you've got the bolt in, you won't ever go get the bolt back out. You'll have to cut it. So put the bolt front to back when you're installing the uh, frame side track bar bracket bolt. Okay, so now we can go through and start tightening up bolts because all the arms are in place. I've got the track bar in, radius arms, lower control arm of the radius arm, the upper locating arm of the radius arm. That's all in. So we can go ahead and start tightening bolts. This broken ABS sensor that came, it's okay because you have to switch over the older ABS sensors into these 900 hubs anyway because the ABS sensors on the 900s are active, and on the 400s and 800s, they're passive and they don't recognize. So you have to switch out the sensors anyway. I always keep a little plug on the end of the brake line while it's sitting here so we don't just get tons of brake fluid flowing because it'll always just keep flowing. I mean, just even in that little bit of pulling the plug and getting this. Oh, crap. I always do it every time. I didn't put it through the bracket. There we go. I'm getting ready to install my calipers and the most important part of the Tahoe Overlanding Axle Swap is right here. That is the Tahoe Overlanding Brake Caliper Spacers. These are what make it possible to use the GM six lug hubs on the Dodge Axle. These spacers, when used on a 2000 or 2001 Dodge Ram 1500 Dana 44 knuckle, allow the 
GM six lug hubs to be bolted to the knuckle and to fit and line up with the Dodge brake caliper. Since there's spacers involved, these are appropriately longer bolts that come with them. They are grade 10.9. Everything you need. Well, I'm going to show you how to install your Tahoe overlanding brake caliper spacers. And that's what accomplishes the six lug conversion on the Dodge second gen Ram Dana 44 to um, accept the GMT hubs. So. The GMD hubs bolt to the uh, Dodge knuckle just fine in place of the original Dodge hub, but um, with the GMT 800 brake rotor, the alignment of the caliper is incorrect by that much. So we have these special machine spacers that we sell as part of the Tahoe Overlanding Fabrication Parts Bundle that spaces the caliper out the exact amount that it needs to be spaced out to center the caliper on the uh, GMT 800 brake rotor. So what you need, your brake caliper bracket, your spacers, and the longer bolts that come with the spacers. So with the brake rotor already on the hub, you can see these are the mounting bolts. These are the mounting holes for the brake caliper. We use the Dodge brake caliper on the GMT 800 rotor. Slide the bolts in. Tahoe overlanding brake caliper spacers. Next comes the bracket. Now if you look down in here, you can see with the bolt installed, there's just barely a thread or two sticking out through the brake caliper. That's how you've got enough bolt purchase, so there's enough bolt there without being too much to interfere. So this is just a dry install. You Make sure you torque it to the Dodge brake caliper torque spec and make sure that you put some Loctite on those uh, threads as well so they don't back out on you. This was just for demonstration purposes. So on this GMT 400 solid axle conversion. Before you start cutting this out, to fit the upper shock mount, there are lines mounted to the back of this that we need to get moved before you start cutting. And I guess be careful because even just touching it from that back side to make a quick video can break that line off of that fitting. Be sure to check out the next video in the series to see the next step. We're going to go through this step by step and show you every step you need to do.